our question for the morning is, who do you know that you really trust, that really trusts God? So who can you think about that you would say, wow, that person really trusts God? Think of someone? Well, I can think of Abraham, right? He had to really trust God. He left everything he knew and went to a country where he didn't know where he was going. Or we can look at Moses. He had a big time trust when he's walking through the waters, right? And they parted. How about Noah? I thought of him today because it's raining. <laughs> How about the trust that he had to have to get in that boat and do what he had to do, right? And I also thought of like Pastor Lauren. Think about Pastor Lauren's story because we all have a story, right? He had to have some trust, a 23-year-old young adult, right? Being raised, one of nine kids living out here in the country as it was, right? Back then, raised by a dad who worked many hours in construction, a mom who didn't even drive, right? <laughs> like, there's some trust going on there. From the very beginning of a word, when the Lord gives you that word, to trust that he's going to make it come to pass. And sometimes when we look at those stories and we look at people that we know, whether they're in our life, whether they're in the Bible, that helps our trust, doesn't it? It helps to increase our faith and our trust knowing, wow, that person, they really, really trusted God. And in our story today, we're going to look into that and we're going to see about this trust and about how much David, to do what he did, he had to trust God as well. And the first scripture I want to point to is in Psalms 22, where it says, But you are he who took me out of the womb. You made me trust while I was on my mother's breasts. And in verse 4 and 5, our fathers trusted in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. Psalms 22 was written, we know most of the Psalms were written by David, right? And it talks about how this trust was born. In this case, he's referring to the coming Messiah and is referring to Jesus, but we know that that refers to us as well, that this trust was born inside of us. Ooh, think about that. Wow, that's what it says, doesn't it? It says, you trusted me. Out of the womb, you made me trust you. So we're all born with that trust inside of us. And I thought that was very interesting to think about because so many times we lose our trust. All we got to say is, wait a minute, God made me trust. He made me this way from the womb. The Bible says he put this trust inside of me. And then further down in the psalm, he talks about our fathers trusting and how they they trusted that they would be delivered. Going back to the point when we look at situations in our life or someone else's life and say, well, it worked that time, it's going to work again because God hasn't changed from then to now. So we need to think about this and remember that this trust that God gives us is always inside of us. It's born in us. It's how he created us to be. And we have examples around us. I was thinking about the example that David would have had. So David's, it would be David's grandfather, right? That's how it would be like, uh, was Ruth, and his uh, grandmother would have been Ruth. So if you know the story of Ruth, Ruth was widowed, young, and uh, her mother-in-law lost her sons, and they were having a tragic situation, and so her mother-in-law said, go back to your people because I'm no good to you now. And Ruth said, no, I'm going to stay with you, Naomi. I like that because being a mother-in-law and all, I thought that's the kind of mother-in-law I want to be like Naomi, where they just want to be around me all the time. I think that would be good. But she stayed with her. And Ruth said, I want to trust in your God, Naomi. I've seen your God, and I want to trust in that. And the story goes that Ruth did go with Naomi, and she met a man who took care of her. And from those two, uh, came Obed, and from Obed came David. I think I said that right. So look at, he must have heard that story. I would think so. That that story was passed on, and there was a lot of trust running through that family because they had seen miraculous event. 
That story alone is a miraculous story. And we have our own in our life. We have our own stories that we need to share with our children about how we trusted in God and how God has seen us through different situations. Because we know the stories, and oftentimes we forget to tell our kids. I sometimes say, you mean you don't know that story? They said, no, Mom, never heard that story. Well, we need to write them down, and we need to make sure our kids do hear that story so we can pass it on. And then there's another interesting thing that they talk about in psychology, and they talk about when you're raising your kid. It's called Erickson's theory. And what Erickson's theory does, it tells you all the stages of your kid and what's supposed to be happening. Well, as a new mom, I wanted to know all that. But there's this first stage, and the first stage they talk about is from birth to 18 months. It's called trust versus mistrust. Isn't that interesting? Here, the first thing God does to us is put this trust inside of us so that we don't have any mistrust. And here's a theory that talks about trust versus mi mistrust. So they talk about babies when they cry and when they need things, if they're tended to, they develop trust. And if they're not tended to or there's issues, then they develop this mistrust. And then they go through all the signs to say what kind of person you are. Well, not hard to tell what kind of person you are. You're either trust or you don't trust. You're, are you a conspiracy person? Are you a, oh, I don't know what they're after kind of person? Or are you... Wow, yeah, I trust you till you cross me, right? Are you one of those? Whatever it is inside of us, mistrust was not put into us from God. Mistrust is put in, into us after the fact. Somewhere along the, the way, we learn about mistrust. Now, they say it happens very early on. I don't know whether it does or whether it doesn't. But I just know what the Bible says, and he says, God says, puts that trust in us. So we're not necessarily born to mistrust. We're born to trust God. And once we trust God, then that trust is often tested. And this is the example we read about this morning in the story of David. So Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are youth. And he is a man of war from youth. Philistine will be like one of them, seeing as defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion, the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. That's exactly what David did. David was young here. I think they say he was like 15 or 16 years old. Can you imagine? So some of us would say, well... Dumb teenager, what did he know? He didn't know any different, right? But he did know different. In the sense of when he was out there with the sheep, the Lord had already delivered him. He had already trusted in God. So for him to trust again, he had something to go on. It's the same in our own life. Think about the time where you really had to trust in God. He delivered you through a situation or through a circumstance. Well, here David is saying, again, he said, this is not a problem for God. I've already seen this. I've already done this. It's just a different animal. It's a Philistine instead of a lion or instead of a bear. But his trust here was tested. Could he trust God in this situation as well? And the other thing that I love that David did is not only did he trust God when tested, but he declared it. This took a lot of nerve as well. He said, the day, this is the day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. He's making that declaration. I will strike you and take your head from you. Can you imagine saying that to this big giant in front of all these people? Can't you see the stage? And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp to the Philistines, to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth. And all the earth may know there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know the Lord does not save with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Wow. That's a pretty intelligent 16-year-old, if you ask me. He made that declaration, the Lord will do the battling for me. I don't need a sword. That's kind of another interesting thing since David ended up being a man of war, right? He did a lot of battles, but he knew no matter what that the battle was the Lord's. Do you know this morning, no matter what, that the battle is the Lord's? That God is fighting your battles today? He can fight them with a little stone. He can fight them with anything. 
But the key here is, and the point was, that I'm trusting in the Lord. David was trusting in the Lord that he was going to make this victory come and declared it. It takes a lot of uh, guts sometimes to declare something, right? When somebody says to you, when somebody asks you something, you say, well, I know that the Lord will help me. I think of in 2008, some people have different time periods that they were struggling in but mine was 2008 that I remember so well, and that financial crisis. There was so much going on. And somebody was talking to me and saying, well, if you need something, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. And I remember saying, well, I appreciate that, but I believe that the Lord is my source. And I believe if there's something that I need, the Lord is going to give it to me. And so as we went through our financial battle, and I was thinking, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Sometimes it's something we just don't see, right? And I remember talking to my mom about it. I said, Mom, I don't know what I'm going to do. We've got this situation. We've got that situation. She said, well, aren't you a saver? I said, I am a saver. Well, don't you have some money saved? I said, I do, but that's not the point. That's rainy day money. She said, honey, it's a rainy day. <laughs> that's what she said to me, right? Because sometimes we look at that and we don't see what's sitting right in front of us and how important it is for us to know God is our source. God does our battle, and it's God that we need to trust in over and over and over and over again. And Jesus was our example here as well as he became tested, and he, he was mocked. And as they mocked him and teased him, likewise the chief priests, also mocking with the scribes and the elders, said, He saved others himself. He cannot, he cannot save he is the king of Israel. Let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Jesus was tested, right? They were making fun of him. And what's so interesting is if the chief priests and the Pharisees had read their Bible, they know that this was prophesied about this already, right? But they didn't trust they didn't believe. And so as Jesus was tested, we know how the story goes. It didn't matter to him because he knew the word of God and he had to, at his time of need, trust in God. And in Psalms 56, I put over this, what is the answer to fear? Because really when we don't trust God, we're afraid. That's what happens. We're afraid. Well, I can't trust them. Well, why not? It says, wherever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. What's the answer to fear? Trusting God. We have all these books written. We have all these things done about anxiety and fear and how to overcome it and what to do and what not to do. David tells us really plainly what to do. When I'm afraid, I'm going to trust in God. We're not going to let that fear get a hold of us inside. We have to say, you know what? I may have a little fear coming up, but no, I'm going to trust God. Do you know trusting God is a choice, right? I can choose to trust God or I can choose not to trust God. So this is our simple message, the one that I think everyone's going to remember out of all these scriptures we talk about today. What am I going to do when I'm afraid? I'm going to trust God. That's what David did. And when you look in the Bible, in the book of Psalms, trust is there a zillion times. Because we think of David, and we always think of him as a man of faith, and a man that had a heart after God. But actually, he was really a man of trust. And we see a couple of more examples here. And in Hebrews, he says, and again, I will put my trust in him. In Ephesians, it says, in him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. When we look at this scripture, and we see that trust, not only do we choose that trust, but we allow it to develop in us. And as we allow it to develop in us, it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And in Ephesians, that's what we're, he's saying here. He says, in him you also trusted. So first thing, we trust, we choose to trust. After you heard the word of truth. We hear that word, 
does something inside of our heart, we're trusting God. And the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed. And from that trust and from that hearing of word, what happens to us? We believe it. And that belief can change in, and that belief turns into our faith, doesn't it? Sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who's a guarantee of our inheritance. So you see how that trust process works? As we first choose to trust God, then he adds to that. Do you ever hear the saying, trust the process? Just trust the process. Well, you know what I'm declaring this morning? Just trust the process. Because as we trust God and we trust the process that God is doing inside of us, we can have the same experience that David had. We can say, when I'm afraid, I'm going to trust God. And with the trust is promises as well. With all this, God gives us different promises. And Isaiah, he says, but he who puts his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. And uh, we read the next scripture, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who trust him. As for God, his way is perfect. His way is complete. His way is final. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. This is the time that we're inheriting the holy mountain. We're talking about that spiritual mountain, about Mount Zion, right? And that's the mountain that he has us inheriting at this time. And I like this. In the day of the strong, uh, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. When we have a stronghold in our life, God says it should be him. He should be our stronghold because he is good. And then finally he talks about his way being perfect. And I love this where he says, not only is God's way perfect or complete or finished, but he says the Lord is proven. How many, do you know any people that are prove me, prove it to me people? <laughs> Dennis raised his hand really fast. Yeah, some people are like, really prove it. Do you ever talk to something? Somebody about the Lord, and they say, really? What's your proof? Well, I have good news today. Here's the proof. I'm the proof. <laughs> right? Want to hear what God has done in my life? Want to hear what we, he has helped me through, or helped you through? We're the proof. Because God has proven, because God's word works. God's way works. Some people will say, how can you be so sure? Because God said so. And if God says so, it's got to be true. And also, we're going to trust God no matter what. What does no matter what mean? No matter what means no matter what. <laughs> well, what about this? Well, what about that? No matter what, we're going to trust him. And here are two examples. The first is in the book of Timothy where Paul's talking to them. And he says, for to this end, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who who believe. We both labor and suffer. Whether we're suffering, whether we're laboring, whether we have to give something up, whether we can't do what we want, whether we have to change our situation, whatever it is, no matter what, we put our trust in the living God. And in this verse in Job, in my Bible reading time, I'm in the book of Job. Ooh, every time I get to Job, I go, oh no. Not Job again. Job is a hard book to read, if you've ever read Job. But here's what he says. He says, though he slay me, yet I will what? I'm going to trust him. Though he slay me, I'm going to trust him. Though things didn't work out the way I want, I'm going to trust him. Though I have a child addicted to drugs, I'm going to trust him. Though I had tragic financial things happen to me and lost jobs, this one hasn't turned out, that one has I'm still going to trust him, really? Amen. Really? No matter what, no matter what, we're going to trust God today. We're going to trust God this morning. If Job could do it, anybody can. And if you haven't read the book of Job, you'll see. And the other thing uh, also is we think about David's life that he passed on to Solomon what he had learned. And these are two scriptures, uh, well, I guess they're three all together, but I wanted them on the same page. The first one we know quite well, trust in the Lord with all your heart. 
Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Where did Solomon, Solomon wrote Proverbs, right? So where do you think Solomon would have learned that from? I think he learned from his dad. Because look what it says here in Psalms. It says, because you hear me, your loving kindness in the morning, in you do I trust. There's that trusting in the Lord. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk, directing my path, right? For I lift up my soul to you. And when you lift up your soul to the Lord, you're not relying on your own understanding. You're lifting it up to the Lord. And then he says, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. There it is. And I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices and my song I will praise him. Solomon learned what his dad, David, had demonstrated and taught him. Do you know the most that people are going to learn from us isn't what we say, but it's what we do? It's our example of our testimony of who we are, not what's coming out of our mouth. Ask your kids. They'll tell you if they're grown up. They might not tell you when they're little, but they'll tell you later on. And that's what David did. He emulated that lifestyle. He emulated that behavior for his son Solomon. That Solomon was able to say the very famous Bible verse we read often, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. It's all based on what? Trust and the heart. And from this, God wants to make us not only relying on that trust, but trustworthy. In the same way that Solomon learned from David, Timothy learned from Paul. He says, Oh, Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust, avoiding the profane and idle battlings, contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. By professing it, some have strayed concerning the faith. So here he's telling them, guard what's committed to your trust. Be trustworthy. God has committed to each and every one of us his word. Living inside of us, the word that we give to other people, we want to be trustworthy with that word, just like Paul was asking Timothy to be. And how do we know if we're being trustworthy? How do we know uh, about how we are being? And it tells us here in Luke a good story. It says, and he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves. What were they? How did he know? They trusted in themselves. They were righteous and despised others. I tell you, this man went down to the house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Pastor Lauren talked to us about humility on Sunday. I wanted to include this scripture. He was talking about uh, two people, one who, who's going to make it in, he was asking. The one that's righteous and does everything right, and I've done this and I've done that. And there was another man who came to him and said, I'm a sinner, I'm no good. He had that true repentance that we've been talking about at church. He had that true changing and turning and perspective change that we've been talking about. And that's where he says to him, he who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. So how do I know if I'm trusting in the Lord? Are you humble? Do you, are you a know-it-all? Don't you love know-it-alls? You don't even have to think. They know everything. Don't have to just ask them. They'll tell you, right? No, we can't be know-it-alls. Why? The Bible says we got to humble ourselves. We have to rely on him. We live in a world that tells us we need to be independent. That goes against the scriptures. God says we need to be dependent upon him, right? I will leave you in the midst of meek and humble people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. That's in Zephaniah. They were talking about leaving a remnant. Everything had gone badly. People were disobeying. Nobody was doing what they were supposed to be doing. But Zephaniah prophesied. He said, no, the Lord says he's going to leave this remnant. That's us, a meek and a humble people. How do we know if we're meek and humble? Who do we trust in? We trust in the Lord. And so, and for, uh, for it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, and was the heart of his father, as was the heart of his father David. 
This is very sad because what happened to Solomon, and the reason I included this scripture, I want to show this connection between trusting and the heart. See, when our heart's open and our heart is exposed, it allows us to trust a lot easier than when our heart is hard or our heart is closed. You think of somebody you know that he doesn't trust anything or anybody. Maybe it's you. I, I hope it isn't. But maybe it's you. You have a hard time trusting. You know what? I have been burned. I did that once, and I'm not letting that happen again. What's the first thing we do? Harden our hearts, right? And when you harden your hearts, what is it easy to have? It's easy to have mistrust, but it's very difficult to trust. If you were to go to counseling and you were to start up saying, oh, well, I don't know how I'm going to trust again, first thing they're going to say is you've got to be open, right? And so we see this heart-trust connection, and this is what happened to Solomon. Solomon lost the heart connection because, as we mentioned, David was a man after God's own heart. Because why? The next verse says because he did his will. That's what it says in the Bible. But David was not only a man after God's own heart, but he was a man of trust. He really, really trusted God. And so his son Solomon, when his heart got turned, so did his trust. See how those two go together? And so it's important for us uh, to see this. And in the final scripture, I'm going to show you an example where, a good example, King Hezekiah trusted in God. He trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel, so that after him there was none like him among the kings of Judah, nor were there any before him. For he held fast to the Lord. He did not depart from following him. But what did he do? He kept his commandments, which the Lord had commanded Moses. The Lord was with him. He prospered him wherever he went. The very first thing he says here in verse 5 is what? He did what? He trusted. And so what a simple message we have this morning. As we prepare our hearts this morning to be able to say, you know what? I want to be one of those ones that are going to trust in God. I want to be one of those ones that can trust in him in all his ways. Lean not into my own understanding, but Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to acknowledge you, and I'm going to give you my heart again and again and again. 